broken microwave ovens like this one generally aren't worth repairing, but they do contain some useful parts worth salvaging. I've had this one sitting in my shed for a few years, and today I'm going to dismantle it, show you what's inside, and how to safely salvage the transformer and other parts contained within. I've dismantled a few of these over the years, and although they can differ slightly depending on their age and the make and model, the differences are usually fairly minor. I should probably start though by stating the obvious, which is that microwaves like this operate at very high voltages and you should never take one apart while it's still plugged in. There are a few other things actually to be careful of even after it's unplugged, but I'll point these out once I get the case removed. If you do decide though to dismantle one of these yourself, Please be careful, use common sense, and be safe. You won't need any fancy tools for a disassembly. I used an impact driver with a screwdriver bit just to speed things up a little, but a Phillips head screwdriver would suffice. I also used a pair of pliers and a pair of tin snips at times to cut through various brackets inside, which made it easier to remove the wiring loom in one piece. I also wore some gloves, which was just to keep my hands clean. However, you might want to wear a thicker pair of gloves that will offer some insulation. I began by removing all of the screws that attach the outer casing to the frame. And once you have the outer casing off, you should be able to see all of the internal components. The layout might look a little different depending on your make and model, but most microwaves have the same fundamental parts. There's our primary target, the transformer, a compact high capacity thermostat there, a high voltage capacitor, a fan, the magnetron, and then there's also some relays, motors, and other components which I'll be removing as well. The first thing I recommend that you locate though is the capacitor, but please at no time touch the contacts of that capacitor until you're 100% certain that it has been discharged. Even though this microwave hasn't been plugged in for years, you should always treat high voltage capacitors like this one as if they're charged until you're absolutely certain that it's not. It's just not worth the risk. On this model, the capacitor is fixed to the fan assembly, but it's still possible to discharge the capacitor before removing it. You can make a capacitor discharging tool that essentially consists of two probes, a high power inline resistor, so that you can short the capacitor in a more controlled manner. I might make a separate video on how you can make one of those yourself, but if that's not something you have on hand, you can also discharge the capacitor by simply shorting the two contacts with an insulated screwdriver or a pair of pliers. You should make sure that the screwdriver or pliers are bridging both terminals and hold it there for a few moments at least. When doing this, it's also a good idea to wear some thick insulated gloves and hold one hand behind your back just to lessen the chance of you becoming part of the circuit. As you do this, if the capacitor is holding charge, you may hear a loud pop accompanied by a flash. I don't like discharging capacitors this way as it can potentially damage both the capacitor and the tool you're using to short it. If you do opt to do it this way, try and leave the microwave in storage for a while first, which will hopefully mean that by the time you're ready to dismantle it, the capacitor will have already discharged itself like this one had. But again, always treat these high voltage capacitors with respect and understand that they could contain a lethal charge. Treat them carefully and with the necessary precautions until you're 100% certain that you have discharged the capacitor. Next, let's take a look at the magnetron. The magnetron is the part that produces the microwave energy, and while they can be very dangerous, there's no radiation risk right now because it's not being powered. One thing to be aware of though, on older microwaves especially, is that the ceramic insulator that you can see here often contains something called beryllium oxide, which if you were to crush it somehow, say you damaged it with uh, an angle grinder or another tool trying to get access to the magnets in the magnetron, and you were to inhale that dust, it can lead to an incurable lung disease called beryliosis. As far as I know, most modern microwaves now use aluminium oxide, but either way, dispose of the magnetron carefully and avoid cutting into it or damaging the insulator in any way. It's, again, just not worth the risk. Now with the capacitor and the magnetron removed, we're just left with the transformer and then the wiring and some of the smaller components. In this case, I'm going to remove the wiring and some of the other components first, just to make it easier to get access to the transformer. But you can remove the rest in whatever order works for you. Don't forget as well to remove the bottom panel so that you can access and remove the geared turntable motor as well. 
It looks like this. The high voltage transformer is one of the most valuable components we can salvage. These are sold online anywhere from $30 to $100 in some cases. And so if you're working on high voltage projects, save yourself some money by grabbing these whenever you get the opportunity. The transformer takes 240 volts mains AC power, in my case, into the primary coil and through electromagnetic induction, steps that power up so that between 1800 and 2800 volts is produced by the secondary coil. Just before I wrap, I'll say again, please use caution when opening up high voltage appliances. Make sure you take the necessary precautions I've mentioned in this video. Use protective gear and insulated tools where possible. I have some projects coming up where you'll get to see some of these components put to use, so don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see those. But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please click like, and if you have any requests for future videos, feel free to leave me a comment.